Hi guys, welcome back. My name's Kevin Lawrence and on this channel we focus on product photography and today we're going to make a camera float. Okay guys, so today's subject is an old 35mm camera an old a Pentax camera actually. I'm gonna show you that in just a second and I'm gonna show you around the setup and what we're, what we're working with today and how we're gonna take the photograph today. Okay, so first things first, we've got our light set up and it's pointing just here at our subject, which is our camera. So what we've also got is got my Canon 80D hooked up. It's tethered, tether cables running from here all the way down and it's hooked up to my laptop which is running Capture One Pro, okay? So right now I've got the, uh, just the standard reflector on the light and it's pointing to the left hand side of our subject. Okay, so here's our subject. This is the Pentax camera that I've got set up nicely and it's being floated by a magic arm. Now the magic arm I picked up on Amazon for about 15 pounds. It's, it's a fairly cheap one, but it's doing the job. I've got it connected to the table here and it goes up and screws into the bottom of the camera. So that's where we're going to be photographing today and I've got it on the, the background, the black card pinned to the wall here. And I've got the, the, the Pentax camera, the subject, at a slight angle so that there's a bit of movement in the shot. And in post-production in, in Photoshop, I'll be able to take away the, uh, the magic arm and we'll be able to make it float. Okay guys, so first things first is, before we take the shot, we need to knock out uh, the majority of this ambient light or all the ambient light in the room so that when we take the shot, it's just the strobe light um, the, the subjects, the lighting. Um, what I've done is I've set the Canon camera to one over 200th of a second. It's at f8, um, which should be sharp enough um, for the subject. And my ISO is set to 100 as always. So let's just take a shot. and it looks completely black which is great which means that we're knocking out all of that ambient light so now i'm going to go turn on our strobe okay that's the the strobe light turned on now so we can take a test shot with just the uh, just the reflector. Okay, so the first thing that I can see is it's very out of focus. <laughs> so I need to set the focus here on our camera. Okay. So pretty much focused on the logo. Let's take another shot. Okay, great. So now we're in focus. The framing uh, is quite good. So I've just brought up the, the grid here. So this is the rule of thirds, which you may may have heard of before. So what I've done is I've 
positioned, um, composed the shot with the lens of the camera here on this uh, rule of third line, it's in between here and here. And I've also placed the logo, Pentax logo, along this line here. I've placed uh, the kind of most important areas I feel uh, on those lines. Okay, so I can see that it's a little bit dark. So I'm gonna to have to turn the power on the strobe up. I've turned it up two stops. I think that's gonna to be too much. But let's take a shot. In this shot, um, we can see everything a lot clearer. Um, and if I zoom in, where's my zoom tool here? Okay, I'm picking up quite a lot of dust. <laughs> As you can see, I'm also getting exposure warnings here. It's quite a good thing about capture warnings, you can turn these on and off. So I'm picking up some exposure warnings on the corners there. But there's, there is quite a lot of dust here as well. But our logo seems to be in focus. And we're starting to lose a little bit of focus here which isn't too bad, it's, you know, it's quite nice. I could turn up the aperture to bring that into focus a little bit more, but I actually don't think I want to. I want the focus to be here. Let's check the lens. Hmm. The lens is maybe a little bit out of focus as well around here. So actually I think I will, I'm going to turn our aperture up and if I do that here without moving it, let's go to f11. Now that's going to affect our exposure. Well, let's take another shot and see what it's like. So I'm going, I'm only getting very small exposure warnings here and here. Let's zoom back in. Straight away, this is now in focus, which is great. Our logo's still in focus. I'm actually picking up more focus here and here. So I'm going to stick at f11. And what we can do is we can start to play with the light now, the position of the light, the intensity of the light as well. Okay, so based on the fact that I'm picking up quite a lot of dust on, on the subject on the camera, I'm going to spend about a little bit of time getting rid of some of that dust and, and dirt and things before we start to take any more shots. And I'll start to, to after that, I'll start to play around with the, the lighting and get our lights set up the way that we want it. So I'm gonna jump in and get cleaning. It's always better to do this before you take the shots. We'll, I'll probably have quite a little bit of cleanup in Photoshop uh, afterwards, but it saves time in the long run doing it just now. But obviously with something that's a little bit old and quite intricate like this, lots of little crevices and things like that. You're not going to get everything. Okay, let's take another shot and see if that's improved.
Okay, so it's a little bit better again, especially in this area here. Looking at the image itself, it's in, it's in focus, it looks, looks good, looks nice. What I would like to do though is improve the lighting. The focus that I, that I want to get is here. Our light, our light that's coming in from the left hand side here is, is really nice, it's given it given shape to the 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 grip here um, as well as some of the the light hitting here and you know it's given us a little bit of shape and the light's hitting here as well. But I want to also light here. Now we've only got one light so I'm actually going to use a reflector and see what we can do. Now my reflection is just a little bit of white card and I'm going to position it somewhere where the the light from our strobe is going to hit it and reflect back into the subject itself. We can see that the light's hitting the side quite nicely and as soon as I bring in our bounce card you can see that it's lighting the top of the camera a little bit nicer. So that's what we're going to do and we'll take another shot. Looking at what's come in if we compare the previous shot you can see that the bounce card is really lighting up the logo here adding a little bit more focus on there which is what I like we're also getting a little bit more fill in here as well looks good I'm happy with that I know what I need to do with the bounce card so that I can highlight the logo a lot better and bring the focus in onto that but what I do want to do is improve the 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 lighting overall I think it's it's still a little bit underexposed uh, in some areas and I'm getting some overexposure here so what I'd actually quite like to do is soften the light by introducing some diffusion. Now, the best way to, to do that is actually use some tracing paper. Now I got some, I picked up some tracing paper off of Amazon, quite cheap, um, maybe about 20 pounds. And uh, it's it's great, It's it really does the job for diffusing the the light and bringing in a larger light source which would then in turn make the the light on our on our subject a lot softer so I'm going to do that I've actually already got it set up and, and ready to go here um, it's on attached to a boom arm that's attached to the, to the C stand so I'm going to bring that that down just now and then see what that does to the shot I've just got a handy clip to keep that in place. Okay, so first of all, let's just take a picture and see what that does to our lighting. So straight away, I can see that our, our light here is a lot softer. It looks a lot nicer and there's less uh, exposure warning showing up. There's just a very, very small one here. Um, but I think overall it's very underexposed now. So we're going to need to turn the strobe up a lot more in power. Okay, so I've turned it up about as, as 
maybe a stop and a half. Um, but I, have, I do feel that it's maybe not quite right in conjunction with our paper here. So I'm going to move the light a bit closer. Now you can see I've also got the strobe light as it hits the diffusion paper. I've got it set to an angle and this will create a nice gradient on the, on the subject. Um, so we set that there. We've turned up our strobe. Let's take another shot and see what we get. Okay, well, if we compare the last shot, it's definitely much more exposed. I really like the the lighting we're getting here. It's a lot more, it's filled in a lot more in this area as well. If we go back and compare it to our shot with no diffusion at all, you can see that the, the diffusion has made it a, a larger light source and has really filled in a lot of areas down here. We can see a lot more of this texture and the grip, which looks fantastic. The lighting it's hitting here on the metallic is really quite nice and going around here. We've still got a couple of small exposure warnings, but I'm not too worried about them because they're quite small. And I really like how much we're seeing of the texture on on the lens as well. So I think what we also need to do is on the left hand side here, if I zoom in, that we're getting this white line here running all the way down the subject and it's quite it is quite um, bright here and that's good that you know that we're on a black background um, and so it's actually bringing the camera forward a little bit but in this particular area and maybe on the left hand side of the camera here I, I don't really like it that much I like it here where we can start to see the grip but I don't like it right on the edge and actually what that is is as the strobe is hitting the diffusion paper it's also picking up some some bounce from from the wall so the light is being reflected into the wall and back in to the camera so i'm actually going to flag off this area of the wall to stop that bounce and that should get rid of the light here so i can do that just by grabbing a bit of black card. This is actually a kind of greyish card. Um, I didn't have another black card, but this should still do the job. So if I just bring that in here, I've just got it <laughs> resting on a, a chair. Um, if I bring this in here, that should hopefully stop any bounce light that we're getting. So let's take another shot and see if that's worked. Yeah, that's definitely helped with the, the lighting here. And we're getting actually a nicer gradient along the top here. If I compare it to the last shot, you can really see the difference. very much improved and it's also helped with some of the, the reflection here and made slightly more of a gradient so it's highlighting here and that that's going to help with bringing your eye into this area once we add our bounce card back in textures still look great here It's also gotten rid of some of the, the light here. There is a little bit of reflection that I'm not too keen on, this kind of orange here. 
Now, if I was to use another bit of card, I've got a little bit of black card here. We can certainly get rid of that. The bit of orange light that I was talking about is just here. Just hitting the camera here from, from the bottom. So, what I'm gonna do is grab a little bit of black card. Now, I believe that if I place it just here, balance it there. I'm hoping that's done the job now. Okay, let's see if that helps. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. The next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna introduce that reflection back into shot that needs to go just about here, reflecting back into the subject. Um, but instead of holding it like I did before, I'm actually gonna try it with a metallic reflector. So I'm going to use one of our handy five and ones and I've got it set to the silver side and that should actually reflect some silver uh, light back into to the camera. It's actually, one, it's stronger than the white card um, and because it's a lot more reflective but it will also enhance the metallic shine that we've got on the the camera, the subject body itself. So if I just hold this here, position it, play around with how this comes in. I quite like it about here. And let's compare it with our last shot. We're definitely getting, picking up a lot more light than we did with the white card. Wow. It's filling in quite quite a lot actually. Um, even some down here where it's in shadow has really filled it in here. I actually think it's a little bit too much. Um, the exposure here is a little strong. Whereas when there was a little bit more shadow, you were picking up the, the logo here. Hmm. I think we need to find a happy medium because there's too much going on. I don't like what it's doing to the, the lens either. Really b bright light in here. I think that we need to go back to our handy white card and just position it exactly where we want it. So let's try again. So this is with our silver reflector. A lot, like I say, there's a lot coming in here. And this is just with the white bench card. And I think that's much better in this section here. And there's a lot less bounce in this, this side in the grip, um, but there still is some here. I was actually filling in some of the light here. Uh, with the bounce card, the white bounce card, it's, it's actually not. And actually, I quite like that. I want to see a little bit more on this side. So I think that we could introduce another bounce card. The light I want to pick up is Probably about here. Okay, awesome. So straight away I can see there's there's more light in here. So that's our first 
bounce card and our second bounce card is highlighting the the top of the logo here awesome I think it looks great there's a little bit of reflection here but that's that's quite nice it's actually filled in this area slightly more much happier with that Okay, so one more thing that I would like to do is if we can try and improve the reflection that that we're getting here. So this might be a, you know, the shot might be comped in afterwards, because um, I don't think we can do it with just one shot. So I'm going to remove our bounce card from here, and maybe maybe position this and use that. Um, <coughs> So I think, hmm, we might not get away with it, I think, if I go back to our live view, let's have a wee look to see what we're getting. I think, in this case, if we were to use our metallic reflector because it's a larger source let's take a shot see what it does I like the way that it's highlighting here but I don't like these spots so I'm actually going to star this one and I think Let's turn it around, use the black, and maybe we could make the lens itself completely black. Let's see what that looks like. Wow, that changes it completely, doesn't it? experimenting with different sources and reflection this is with with black card when there's nothing this is with our reflector which I don't think is very nice and this is with just a piece of white card I'm not quite sure I'm gonna get what what I want um, in the shot so I think we might have to go with the the darker one and we're just taking the the highlights from this shot and then we can comp in the darkness of this shot here because um, I feel these aren't these really aren't working but I think this is our final shot for this area here which we've starred also start this one here for the bottom of the lens and the, and the light that's that's hitting there is really nice. Um, and then I think we could use this one for this edge here. Hey guys, so that's it for this video and join me in the next one where we're going to edit our little camera here. And the most important thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove the magic arm from the shot so it really looks like it's floating in midair. And we'll play around with the, uh, the lighting, the exposure and really make this image pop. Can't wait to get started on that. So join me for the next video. If you like this one, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see any more videos. Thanks very much guys and I'll see you in the next one.